Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremti News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. First up, a 60 year old man is in jail accused of killing his daughter's boyfriend. But in a twist, police say that murder happened last year and the victim's body was just found in the trunk of an abandoned car. Kremti's Kyle Simchuk has more now on what we know about the case. Well, bizarre case and out of an abundance of caution, we are not naming the suspect and the victim to protect the minor involved in the case and the ongoing police investigation. Now, police believe the murder happened last fall and the 19 year old's body was found last month. In this video, you can see the moment a car pulls up and parks outside Rochester Heights Park in northeast Spokane. We uh, walked past it several times. Um, didn't even think much of it. Zachary Allen and his neighbors thought it was just another abandoned car. They had no idea what was really inside. Nothing like this ever happened to me anywhere I lived. Yeah, shocked, very shocked. Police say car prowlers were looking for valuables inside the car, and when they popped the trunk, they found a dead body. Police arrested a 60 year old man and say he admitted to killing his daughter's ex boyfriend by hitting him in the head with a cinder block and stabbing him several times. He told police the teen sold his daughter into a prostitution ring for $1,000 and he had to rescue her. The family of the murdered teen adamantly denies those claims. According to court documents, the 60 year old left the body in the trunk for an entire year in a remote area in North Spokane County. Police say this October, the man asked someone to drive it down to Hilliard for him. Police believe that individual did not know about what was in the trunk. And the 60 year old has been charged with first degree murder. Police say he has no prior criminal history. Mark. Kyle, thank you very much. Today, Moses Lake detectives arrested a 17 year old boy for first degree murder after a body was found at Montlake Park back in September. 21 year old Brandon Dick's body was found on a walking path north of the park on September 27th. Moses Lake police say Dick died from a gunshot injury. Washington's eviction moratorium has officially expired today. That means the process of evictions for past due rent can start once again. Tonight, the Spokane City Council, though, was set to give vote on receiving millions to bolster the city's rental assistance program. Kremtu's Ian Smay is tracking the vote and has more now on how this will impact the rental assistance program. The Spokane City Council unanimously passed two ordinances that will see the city receive more than $15 million for its rental assistance program. That money comes from state and federal grants, and the city is excited to get the money to help renters from falling behind. But the local landlords association is frustrated at feeling left out of the process. The Spokane City Council voted to receive two grants for its rental assistance program. One is for $10.5 million from the Washington State Department of Commerce. The other is for a little less than $5.3 million from the United States Treasury Department. Councilmember Karen Stratton, who sponsored the ordinance for the $10.5 million grant, is excited to add to the city's rental assistance program. It's money we've got to get out in the community, and um, we, we need people need the help. And um, I'm thankful that it's there, and um, thankful that I can be part of the positive process to get that money out. These grants will help fund the program for those who are behind or might fall behind on their rent. Stratton says roughly a million dollars a month is being distributed right now. In fact, she says that high demand is likely behind why the distribution process has gone slowly at times. While well, it has been helpful for both renters and landlords, the Landlords Association of the Inland Northwest hasn't been pleased with the process. Steve Corker says they feel like they've been left out. We want to be a part of this solution in the community. We provide 97% of the housing the private sector does. If we're not a part of the solution, there's not going to be one. Stratton says that Corker was part of a group that would meet with the council to try to address the housing issues brought on by the pandemic, but those meetings eventually stopped. Stratton says she welcomes help from the Landlords Association. That connection hasn't happened yet, but I, I totally support that because I think we need everybody working on this issue, and the Landlord Association is important to us because those landlords are so important to us. Stratton says since the program is funded through grants, the city won't have to pay back the State Department of Commerce or the U.S. Treasury Department. At the end of the day, Corker wants to be part of the collaboration. If you don't develop a regional policy, then all the issues that involve financially challenged people fall in the city of Spokane. Cities can't take that burden. The next steps for the city include starting the process for local groups to apply to run the program. Historically, nonprofits like Catholic Charities or state programs like SNAP have applied for those roles. In the newsroom, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News.
All right, let's talk weather now. It was a chilly start to November today, but at least it was clear and sunny so we could get outside and kind of enjoy the weather. Let's get out to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. And Thomas, a bit chilly out there at this hour. It, it very much feels a bit chillier than what the temperature is describing. Might be a little bit of a wind in the air, but I can tell you this, starting to see a few raindrops, raindrops just now from our Outdoor Weather Center. This is about the time frame we expected. 10 to 11 o'clock is what I was forecasting earlier today. Now it's 11. Now we're seeing some light showers. This has been moving from southwest to northeast across the state. Very light shower activity, just enough to sprinkle, but not really wet, not really enough to get the ground wet. But we are seeing some scattered showers from central Washington down on the Palouse as well. So it's going to be very minimal stuff. If anything for tonight, probably only lasts for a couple hours gone by morning. Tuesday, Wednesday going to be dry back to rain on Thursday, and then we'll at least see these small rain chances through the weekend and even next week as well. But the key is they're just rain chances for now, but this is about the time of year where we start thinking about how close could we be to some reasonable snow chances. In fact, in Spokane, the average first date of snow is November 10th. Doesn't look like we'll get any snow this time around. We'll show you the, the weather pattern. That's the reason why we are going to stay as rain when those rain chances do resume later in the week. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. Washington state health officials say COVID cases and hospitalizations appear to be plateauing across the state. They say the situation is the same as what it was at the peak of the winter surge last December. If the numbers ramp back up, particularly given the low vaccination rate in Idaho, um, that that may uh, increase the pressure again on Washington hospitals. Right now, the number of hospitalizations across the state has stalled at, stalled rather, at around 1,000 in recent weeks. Meantime, here in Spokane, about 124 people are hospitalized right now with COVID-19. Meantime, the world hit a grim milestone today. As of today, 5 million people have died from COVID-19 across the globe. The staggering number comes less than two years into the pandemic. The U.S. alone has reported more than 745,000 deaths. That's more than any other country. So COVID-19, now the third leading cause of death in the U.S. after heart disease and stroke. Well, tomorrow was the general election in Idaho and Washington. So when we come back, we'll break down everything you need to know. Plus, Tom's Turkey Drive underway right now. You can help make a difference by making sure every family has a meal to share this holiday season. Before we go to the break, here's a message from Tom Sherry. Tom's Turkey Drive is one where for almost everyone can be part of this because it's only $20. And even if that's too much, you just partner with a friend and now it's $10 a piece. And now you've bought a family, uh, a complete Thanksgiving meal. It is really just a, that I think, besides helping to feed lots of folks in need, I think the fact that it's an outlet for ordinary people to do something really great for someone else that's hurting, that's really my favorite part of Tom's Turkey Drive. And everybody, it seems like, wants to be part of it. It's really, really beautiful.